Your Majesties, Your Excellencies, Most Honored Laureates, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the Board of the Marcus Wallenberg Foundation, I'm pleased to welcome you to this year's Marcus Wallenberg's Prize Ceremony. Your Majesties, we would like to express our gratitude once again for you honoring us with your presence today and thereby really lending the highest possible dignity to the prize. Your Majesty's continued interest in the prize and its purpose is of utmost value for enhancing the intended stimulating impact of the Marcus Wallenberg Prize on scientific research and technical development supporting forestry and forest product industries. The prize selection process relies on a highly qualified nomination. The foundations want to express its gratitude to all those universities, all those academies, research organizations and individuals all over the world that are nominating candidates for the prize. A key to the prestige of the prize is the selection process for which the prize depends on a distinguished prize selection committee. And I want to express my gratitude to all of those involved in that. A special thank you goes to Professor Christina Oxman and Professor Anita Telemann who are leaving us in the selection committee after having been members for six years now. Further, I also want to address a special thank you to the long-standing assistant to the Secretariat, Mrs. Uh, Kerstin Todmar, who is now retiring after 18 years uh, doing her very good work. Today, the prize will be awarded for the 39th time after being instituted in 1980 in the name of my grandfather by the shareholders of Stura Kopperbergs Bergslags AB. In April this year, we were pleased to announce the result of this year's selections process. And I want to quote from our citation at the time. The 2023 Marcus Wallenberg Prize is awarded to Drs. Darius Adams, Joseph Bongiorno, and Richard Haynes for their development of the original and groundbreaking forest economic models, timber assessment market model, and papyrus, and its extension to the global forest product model. Uh, may I now ask the laureates Haynes and Bongiorno to come up to the podium here with me to receive the reward from the hand of His Majesty.
Your Majesty, members of the Marcus Wallenberg Prize Committee, ladies and gentlemen, we wish to express our sincere thanks to the Marcus Wallenberg Prize Committee for this great honor, as well as to those who worked to nominate us. We are proud of our work developing the TAM and Papyrus models and the many extensions that have been made of them. Our research arose in the late 1970s and the early 1980s, and we owe much to the developers of market analysis and empirical methods in that period. This was a time when policymakers around the world thought means to understand the limits to resource availability and in the face of growing global demands. Economists and operations research, researchers, excuse me, pressing for the application of systems analysis to these questions to recognize the complexity and the interactions within resource use processes. This is when YASA began its forest sector project. The FAO established the regional and global outlook studies. And many countries began preparing their own periodic forest outlook reports. Statistical methods were evolving to allow consistent econometric parameter estimation and large multi-equation models and methods of operation research were expanding to, to, and also models to link the product and factor demand markets. In these models, economic agents might be individuals, countries, regions, and thus enabling spatial analysis and simultaneous solutions to many of the related product and factor markets. Our controversial Contributions merge these co critical concepts and methods into models of the forest sector. And that has remained a useful policy analysis tool over nearly three decades, in part because of its mixed model format, regional and owner detail, elaborate treatment of private timber inventory and management investment, its myopic structure, and our collaboration of developers with policymakers to adapt models structure to decision needs and to explain projection results. At the personal level, we also owe much to our families and those individuals and institutions that mentored, supported, and enabled our work over the years. Dr. Adams, who unfortunately, due to health reasons, could not be with us, acknowledges the early and foundational influence of Professor William McKillop, who pioneered some of the earliest forest product market analysis and Professor Henry Vaux, who always urged his students to keep potential policy questions in mind as they built their models. Development in, of TAM was made possible by the continued support from the U.S. Forest Service's Renewable Resource Assessment Program, extension to enable interactions with the agricultural sector and use of the intertemporal optimizational approaches rose through collaboration with Dr. Bruce McCall of Texas A&M. The development and maintenance of the elaborate computer code and major databases that allowed simultaneous solution of TAM and Papyrus was overseen by a number of talented programmers. And, fi and finally, the continued moral support and the many dinner table discussions of the economic theories that underlie the joint models destructure were freely given by Darius's wife and research collaborator, Dr. Claire Montgomery. Dr. Joseph Bongiorno's parents were farm workers who migrated, who, excuse me, immigrated to France in the 1930s. Little would they have dreamed that their son would be here today. That it happens, he owes to his family, teachers, and students. In France, he had marvelous tutors and generous state scholarships. Bringing him to America was the generosity of Professor Dewar of Syracuse University, also first to teach him the marvels of system analysis and modeling. Joseph was hooked and went on to Berkeley to study with Professor Teagarden. In his first job at the FAO in Rome, Joseph had extraordinary mentors like Alf Leslie, who encouraged his enthusiasm for international issues. And there he met his wife, Angela, the pillar of his life. Joseph then recrossed the Atlantic to join the University of Wisconsin for 44 years. There he had a wonderful students who, starting with the papyrus model of the paper industry, assisted him in transforming it into the global forest products model of the global forest sector 
and they applied it to critical international issues. For myself, I was educated at Virginia Tech and North Carolina State University, where Emma Thompson, Lester Holly, and Richard King guided my studies in the early work in spatial equilibrium models for forest products mar markets. I spent the bulk of my professional career in the Pacific Northwest Station U.S. Forest Service. I was there, I was supported in the development of TAM by David Darn in the Forest Service by Dwight Hare and Robert Buckman, who, who saw in TAM the potential to provide the economic space framework that could overcome the persistent criticism to past Forest Service planning efforts. In closing, the three of us are humbled by this award and in the faith in our efforts shown by those who nominated us. Thank you. Oh,